may I start, sir? Yes, please go ahead, sir. Thank you so much. Sati Bhai Bhuini Khan, Ajay Ami Khan, National Unity Day, celebrate Kuri Bole program day, sab ke welcome Kuriya se. I express my sincere gratitude to Honorable Head of the Department of Political Science, Dr. Jimmy Longmai, Honorable Vice Principal, Dr. Hevasa Lorin, Honorable Dean, Dr. Elika Asumi, and Honorable Director Shikula Lorin for their active contribution, help, and unconditional support in organizing today's program. Dear brothers and sisters, Rashtri Ekta Divas, which is also known as National Unity Day, was introduced by the Government of India and inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi in 2014. The intent is to pay tribute to Vallabhai Patel, who was instrumental in keeping India united. It is to be celebrated on 31st October every year as annual commemoration of the birthday of the Iron Man of India, Sadar Vallabhai Patel, one of the founding leaders of Republic of India. The, found, the, the official statement of Rashtriya Ekta Divas by Home Ministry of India cites that the National Unity Day will provide an opportunity to reaffirm the inherent strength and resilience of our nation to withstand the actual and potential threats to the unity, integrity, and security of our country. On today's occasion, we are blessed and privileged to have Brigadier Dr. Jeevan Raj Purohit as our chief guest. An alumnus Hi, of everyone. National Hello. Academy. An alumnus of National Defense. Hello, sir. An alumnus of National Defense Academy, Pune, and Indian Military Academy, Dehradun. Jeevan has graduated from Defense Services Staff College, Wellington, and attended prestigious higher defense management course at College of Defense Management, PDM, Sikandrabad. Dr. Jeevan has served in United Nations mission assignments at Cambodia with wide-ranging experience of Kashmir insurgency, CHN Glacier, and Deserts of India. He has been, he has been commended by Indian Army Chief Thrice for counterinsurgency operations and by Chairman Chiefs of Staff Committee for academic excellence at College of Defense Management, Sikandrabad. He was the leader of disaster relief operations, training and administration of Department of DOI, that is Government of India. He was also chairman of three army schools and one central school. His academic qualifications include masters in management studies and masters of philosophy and PhD in management from Osmania University, Hyderabad, for his study on job satisfaction among officers of Indian Armed Forces. He was contributed number of articles on organizational behavior and international relations in CDM, national and international journal. Brigadier has been instructor in CDM in the Department of Organizational Behavior and has been head of faculty behavioral sciences at the College of Defense Management and was senior faculty at Army Training Command, Shimla. He has been part of many delegations abroad for strategic management and international relations tours. He is a visiting faculty to a large number of militaries, civil and corporate institutions and has conducted organizational behavior workshops across the country. Brigadier, sir, I wholeheartedly welcome you. Thank you very much. Very kind. We are also blessed to have our students who are wholeheartedly participating in the celebration of unity. What more do we need? Unity upar the amiki khan lage. Let us celebrate unity. Let us celebrate Republic of India. With these few words, I once again welcome you all to this colorful program to celebrate the unity of this ancient grand nation, the land of Buddha, Krishna, Jesus, Nanak, Dhorafter, Moses, Muhammad. With the permission from honorable chairpersons, I would like to conclude my welcome speech 
with a poem in Sangtam Naga language. This poem was taught to me by my Sangtam mother and father in Nagaland. I dedicate this poem to the daily struggles, dreams, aspirations, and bright future of my people in Nagaland. This poem celebrates the unity of the people in spirit, in nation, under the guiding light of the Republic of India. The poem goes like this. Oh, e limi hi, kudoi adengdong atsa, kudoi akyunyung rong, lisa apum kudu, san isa limi hi, beku no vanung. The meaning of this poem is, oh, this land of mine, how beautiful, how desirable. Come, let us all unite and take our land forward. Come, let us all unite and take our land forward. With these words, I conclude my speech and once again wholeheartedly welcome all of you to this grand event to celebrate the one hin oneness. Thank you, Jai Hind, Kuknalim. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for welcoming us with your speech. We you truly feel invited and welcome. Moving on now, I would like to give time to the head of the department, political science, Dr. Remy Longmai, to amplify on National Unity Day and its core. Sir, kindly take your time. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Mere Pere Bio Beno or Pere Vidayatio. Arts Rastriya Ekta Divaske Kawan Osurper Me Dr. Remy Longmai. Up Sapka Hardik Swagat Kartau Honorable Guest Speakers, Sir, our special invitees, fellow teachers and lovely students, all the participants, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm indeed happy to share a few points with you all on this important topic. Why National Unity Day? Why National Unity Day today? Well, we begin the story of politics in India since independence. As you all know, the first few years in the life of independent India were full of challenges. Some of the most pressing ones concerned national unity and territorial integrity of India. We all have read the history textbooks that their goals for agreed one independence we shall run our country through democratic government and two that, that the government will be run for the good of all particularly the poor and the socially disadvantaged groups now that the country was independent the time had come to realize the promise of the promise of freedom, which was not going to be easy, as India was born in very difficult circumstances. Perhaps no other country by then was born in a situation more difficult than that of India in 1947. Freedom came with the partition of the country. The year 1947 was a year of unprecedented violence and trauma of displacement. It was in this situation that independent India started on its journey to achieve several objectives. Yet the turmoil that accompanied independence did not make our leaders lose sight of the multiple challenges that faced the new nation. Broadly, ladies and gentlemen, independent India faced three kinds of challenges of nation building. The first and the immediate challenge was to Shape, to shape a nation that was united, yet accommodative of the diversity in our society. The second challenge was to establish democracy and make it work in India. A democratic constitution is necessary, but not sufficient for establishing a successful working democracy. So the challenge was to develop democratic practices in accordance with the constitution of the country. The third challenge was to ensure the development and well-being of all people, the entire society, and not only of some sections. 
the real challenge now was to evolve effective policies of economic development and eradication of poverty and other social problems. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we focus on the first challenge of nation building that occupy central, uh, center stage in the years immediately after independence. As has been mentioned, since the birth of India resulted from the division of the country, the problem of national unity and integration dropped down her from its very birth. The then political leaders, especially Sadar Balabai Patel, Patel, tried their best to achieve political and territorial unification of India. As you all know, our country is a land of continental size and diversity. Its people speak different languages and follow different cultures and religions. At that time, it was widely believed that a country full of such kinds of diversity could not remain together for long. The partition of the country appeared to prove everyone's worst fears. There were serious questions about the future of India. Would India survive as a unified country, etc.? When Sadar Patel took charge of the Indian State Department created by the government of India to deal with matters arising between the central government and the state, Indian states, following his advice, as well as that of the Lord Mountbatten, all the states, with a few exceptions, decided to accede to the Indian Union in accordance with an instrument of accession. accession. Before the end of November 1949, the deintegration of Indian state was completed with the exception of Hyderabad and Kashmir. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we all gather here to mark the 145th birth anniversary of a great leader, Sadar Dalabai Patel, the Iron Man of India, and to pay him a rich tribute. Sadar Patel fought against the British Empire, and as the first Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister of Independent India, played a crucial role in the unification of India. But the problem of this is its nature and shape change in the course of time. Earlier it was the problem of integration of princely states. Now it is the problem of separatist movements launched in various regions and states in the country. Let us all unite together and support the process of national unity and integration and dedicate ourselves to preserve the unity, integrity and security of this great nation. Jai Hind, thank you all. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us with National Unity Day, making it even more vivid to everyone present today. We are really pleased. Now to freshen things up a little, here's a special performance by Nasen Gundong of third semester BA, presenting the song One Day. Sir Sabur, over to you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Nasim Gandan, for your delightful performance. In accordance to today's order of programs, we now have a short speech by Dr. S. Elika Sumi, Dean of Decent Social Sciences. Ms. Elika, over to you. Okay, our chairpersons, can we move or uh, move ahead with the program? All right, sir. Just for your awareness, a patriotic essay competition organized by the Department of Political Science was held, during which we had a panel of very intellectual judges. They are Sir Anjan K. Behera, Assistant Dean, Ms. Tatong Kalaau, Head of Department History, Sir Amar Ranjan, Head of Department Commerce and Management. So now, I would like to leave the time open for one of the judges to declare the winners of Patriotic Essay Competition. 
Good afternoon, uh, everyone. I do hope you're able to hear me clearly. I'm Anjan Behrab, the assistant dean, and I was I was uh, well. I would I would say say fortunate enough to be one of the judges for this event. Uh, the essays which were given to us, that is from the students, they were very interesting to read. And what I found most striking was that they were original. Uh, I did run a plagiarism check and there was nothing that was lifted off the internet. I think that just goes to show your interest and your passion towards writing. And that is something that you must cultivate and harbor. All the essays were good, of course, but this is a competition. So we can, uh, so there have to be some who have, I mean, there are some like to take this opportunity to encourage every one of you to continue writing. I think there is a certain flair that we have observed in your writing, and each one of you should definitely continue writing. Uh, one suggestion and feedback which we had from our side, the judges, that is when you write uh, on a particular topic, uh, maybe it would be better uh, if, if you uh, express your own opinions instead of describing or defining the topic, because that is something that everyone knows about. Okay, first, so the winners today have excelled in their writing. They have uh, hit the right voice. They have included their personal opinions, and that is what made their writings really interesting. So, uh, as has been uh, told to me, I shall now be declaring the winners of the essay writing competition uh, organized as part of the National. National Unity Day. All right. In third place, in third place, we have Ms. Abeni Yantan. In second place, Moza Sangtam. And the winner of this essay writing competition this year is Keza Viko Loshe with a total score of 25. Congratulations to all the winners and all the participants. You should be proud of your work. Please continue to do well, and God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And now for the presentation, I call the winners to give their presentation one after the other. All over to you guys. Okay, hello. Thank you very much for the time. A very good afternoon to sirs and madamis, professors, and everyone present here today. I am Mr. Mosa Sangtam of PA fifth semester from Department of Political Science. I am very delighted and thankful to the Department of Political Science for organizing such an event on this auspicious day and also for giving me an opportunity to present a short patriotic essay on the theme National Unity. So without further ado, let me read out my essay for you. National Unity Reflections and Perspective. The concept of national unity is vaguely understood. National unity is not something that is applicable only when there is a need or situation arises owing to internal or external conflicts. For instance, in recent times, our country, India, faced external conflict with neighboring countries. In such circumstances, we call for national unity in the form of collective efforts in boycotting products, banning digital apps, and so on. However, the greater question still remains unanswered. India as a nation comprises of many small minorities groups, having their own distinct identity, cultural tradition, race, language, religion, and whatnot. So the concept of national unity becomes a very significant concept in a country like India. The notion of national unity must not be construed, construed only in the spectrum of electoral politics. As formation of a government in the center through coalition form is merely one part of it. Every leader, not necessarily from ruling or opposition parties, must leave behind their ideologies when the question of national integrity 
harmony and peace among its citizens is concerned. Unfortunately, it has been seen that one community is used to spread hatred against another to gain petty political powers by political vultures. We have to understand that political elites plays a pivotal role in bringing unity and them not being used as a scapegoat. It would be wrong and one-sided to solely help political masters responsible for disunity and disharmony. When we speak high of national unity and integrity, there might be instances of discrimination on the basis of ethnic identity and caste. Someone might have been raped in the name of caste. National unity cannot be achieved in its true sense when people within the country are broken and living a fractured socio-political life. India takes pride in the so-called unity in diversity. Unity in diversity, however, the unity that exists is, I believe, not a natural unity, but a manufactured unity. Dr. Bir Ambedkar, the founder of modern India and the architect of its constitution, believe in universal brotherhood, the values of which the, he inculcated in the law of the land. However, it is we who are failing to give justice to the ideals enchanted in, in, our, in, in our constitution as we would not free ourselves from the notion of caste, creed, religion, gender, and other social political binaries that becomes grave threat to the unity of this glorious nation. Man must learn to live like a man and treat his fellow countrymen like human beings. Only then national unity will be cherished and thereby will surely flourish. Thank you everyone, Jane. Thank you. Uh, I would like Apeni and turn to take her time. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Apeni Yantan, and I'm currently in BFE semester, taking political science as my major. Um, I'm really excited to, to be part of this auspicious event. Now uh, I'll be presenting my essay. To live in peace is to live in harmony. Let us build bridges, not walls. I do not want that our loyalty as Indians should be in the slightest way affected by any competitive loyalty, whether that loyalty arises out of our religion, out of our culture, or out of our language. I want all people to be Indians first, Indian last, and nothing else but Indians. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. National Unity Day was introduced by the Government of India in 2014. National Unity Day or Rashtriya Ekta Divas is celebrated annually on 31st October, the birth anniversary of Sardar Balabhai Patel. It is celebrated to pay tribute to Sardar Balabhai Patel who had played a huge role in keeping India united post-independence. Sardar Vallabhai Patel had played a crucial role in India's freedom movement and was the person who persuaded the 565 princely states to accede to India. He is also known as the Iron Man of India for his great commitment towards national integration. India is a vast land of culture. Despite all differences, it stands tall as one. In order to continue to maintain unity, one must educate and make aware of the fact that it is of utmost importance that one must accept all differences and unite together as one for the betterment of our common destiny. Man must practice from home itself the culture of unity. If the members of the family do not cooperate or the oneness is missing, the family will surely collapse. It will never be a happy family. It is, on, it is not possible to bring unity or oneness at once, but from within we can cultivate and spread the message of unity to society, to country, to state, 
share and to these little baby steps will surely bear fruit, which each and every individual will enjoy. Without unity, there is no solution. With unity, there is peace. National Unity Day is celebrated across the countries in India every year to keep the spirit of brotherhood alive, oneness, and most importantly, a sense of unity among us. We shouldn't solely rely on our leaders or freedom fighters to bring peace and unity. But one should realize that you and I, a common man, when John hands together as one, can achieve so much more. By just composing essays, celebrating, taking pictures, and just posting it on social media is not enough. We should work hard every day to educate, to spread the message of unity, the state of being one. It is a common sense of brotherhood, oneness of mind, feeling, etc. In today's world of regionalism, separatism, somewhere the land of unity must lead. It is very necessary for the progress of nation. For the progress of nation, it is, not, it is only possible when all people unite. Bringing people together does not necessarily mean by sacrificing our lives. We can unite ourselves through spreading messages. There is a saying that words are the greatest weapon. Awake, my dear fellow countrymen, it's time to unite ourselves. Enough of these differences. It is time to unite to achieve peace, justice, betterment for our India. Let's all take pledge that we won't let our diversities stop us in joining hands together as one. Despite the diversities, we are one. We have the same motherland. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sir Anjan. I, I didn't expect to win this, but uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, I wouldn't want to bore you, so I'll try to keep this short and discreet. Here's my essay on unity and integration of India. India is not the great country that many of us wish it was. It may have dawned on us by now that our country suffers from numerous problems, from a scarcity of education and literacy to miserably poor sanitation, or from its extreme safeness for religious dogma and extremism to its unsafeness for women across our country. India certainly has her hands full. We are plagued with issues that degrade society. We witness them multiple times in hideous forms. India is arguably not the greatest country, but we are a country of great friendship, of a brotherhood between a Muslim and a Hindu, of a Christian family celebrating Christmas with their Buddhist neighbors, walking hand in hand as we exist under the same Bharata Mata. India is by no means the perfect country but we've always strived for a national spirit of togetherness. In fact, we've done that better than any country in the world. Have you heard of the sick men in Punjab who donate food to weary Muslims and Jains during quarantine? Have you heard of the Gujarati who adopted 472 orphaned girls? Or have you read of the Naga woman who fights racism in Punjab by providing food to migrant workers? Ours is not an ideal nation, but a nation that builds itself hand in hand. States, provinces, families stitched together into this Indian fabric by history and democracy. We, the people, carry the very same principles of tolerance as first etched by the founding fathers of India. We are citizens of a country riddled with great pains and suffering and it is upon us to decide what we do to improve it together. The question, truly, is not if you're an Indian. The only real question is, how will you prove that you're an Indian? Thank you, and Jay Hind. Thank you, Kechawiko. Besides first, second, and third prize winners, we have two consolation prize winners. They are Kenny Sidio Meso of BA 5th semester and Karen Ken of BA 3rd semester. You may also take your time respectively.
Okay, uh, since they are not here, let's uh, move on with the order of the program. Thank you guys for your wonderful presentation. We are truly amazed with your work. May your work inspire others. Congratulations once again, and also a massive thank you to those who participated. Now, we have come to the most important part of the program. As there is a saying by Brandon Sanderson, the mark of a great man is one who knows when to set aside the important things in order to accomplish the vital ones. Today, we have one such gentleman with us who not only conquered obstacles, but also won an inspired society. Joining us today is the man himself, none other than our Honorable Brigadier Dr. Jiwan Raj Porohit. Sir, it's a pleasure to have you with us today, and I give you the time to enlighten us with the Rashtriya Diwas Day speech. Sir, please take your time. Thank you very much, Emily. It's indeed an honor and a privilege to be part of Petro College. At the outset, I congratulate our principal, Mr. Lauren, the entire team of the college who have organized this function in a wonderful, outstanding manner. My sincere compliments to each one of you. The organizers are simply awesome. I am more than confident of this young generation doing, the, doing better than what we really did. My sincere compliments to each one of you. This is indeed a very, very privileged day today, National Unity Day. I was invited by Colonel Joy and the team, Dr. Anirudh. And it gave me a thought as to why a college in Bhimapur uh, would select a person from army on this day to organize and be the calling day, calling speaker. I realize that our strength lies in our hearts, our culture our values and the ancient traditions that we hold in India. Unity Day may have been declared in 2014, but look back, look back at the years that we have spent, that we have experienced. When the world was nowhere, we were at the pinnacle, pinnacle of happiness, pinnacle of success, pinnacle of glory. The ancient Indian glory that we had, other civilizations will take time to achieve it. And when I look back as to India and the entire, to say, uh, South India, so South Asia per se, South Asia includes India and all the neighboring countries around India which has got about 5.2 million square kilometers of the area, area-wise. And I just correlated the same with the India that existed during Chanakya's time, during Chandragupta Maurya. I hope I'm connected now. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Now, now you're visible and audible as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
so what i was mentioning that india or south asia that exists today has got large number of countries and the india that existed almost 2500 years ago 3000 years ago the area is similar and if you go back in the times it was even even bigger and if you recollect this entire area was called as jambu dwipe bharat varshe a huge nation it was a called a dwipe in itself the greeks the iranian civilization the egyptian civilizations they they drew our name from a uh, sindh river the, the name hindustan or hindus came from sindh it became came to be known as hindus as us and gradually the uh, iranians and the greeks they called us evotos and when it was englishized the name became indies and the india and indians that we are today so as regards the geographical existence the heritage existence the cultural existence that we have it's huge it's one union that has been all along with us in in one nation it is possibly the change in times the historical perspectives the onslaught of uh, mughals muslims and then, then the invasion by the british that took us down for a while but this thousand years of our downfall doesn't mean that we are a small nation i i compliment uh, 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 laoshe and uh, uh, abeni who spoke about the national unity and the unity that is in our hearts actually is in our hearts we are such peace peace loving nation all states despite being this variety in the culture traditions language and all that we are all one and laoshe very very rightly said he says you cannot find this in any other country the western world is pure transactional give and take society ours is a transformational nation which has transformed the cultures which has transformed people and the society so we belong to that nation and me talking to you i belong to deserts in rajasthan and you belong to the most eastern state of the country i don't find any difference in our way of thinking in our values in our culture i was luck i was very lucky that i served in uh, tawang as brigade commander i was very lucky to go around entire nagaland all seven sisters of our uh, uh, country but i find that it's a complete unanimity of thought and action possibly some incidents in the past because of which some differentiations some fights have taken place but that has been fight of existence all along in all cultures across the world we are no different we had the invaders we went through that phase and now we are back on the rails a time has come when we are on the path of growth all over again and we shall achieve our time and place of glory very soon very soon i've been very lucky to go around the entire country meet people from diverse backgrounds diverse cultures but the kind of go for the nation the kind of love and affection for the nation is outstanding we have our flaws remember that we have our flaws we have our flaws of politics we have our flaws of corruption we have our flaws of uh, operational part of the democracy but that doesn't mean we are any less it is only to say that all mistakes learned and improved makes you great all over again and we are on the same path if i talk back i i spoke of the ancient uh, uh civilization ancient times that that we spent in time immemorial and the times now that we have it's a difficult time of value that we are going through but the future that i look at is going to be going to be very bright when people start take ownership when the young generation starts taking 
responsibility of doing doing and giving to the country doing good giving to my nation your nation it makes sense every time me asking my country my government my chief minister my prime minister give me something is not the way forward the way forward is to think what is it that i can contribute to my country instead of thinking what my country can do for me that was old time socialist regimes they've gone now is the time that we do i do i do for me. last month i was doing a session with the uh, tourism department in the northeast in guwahati and then we said in corona times what can be done the economy is down business is down tourism and food industry is possibly the last ones that will come up and one of the ideas that i floated was that tourism has to be now locally global rather than globally local don't ask for global people to come to you create your local virtues so strong all of us in all states of the country have got extremely unique products be it agricultural products be it uh, industries or our heritage products that we have now those products have to be brought out to the rest of the world that is what nagaland with 20 lakh plus uh, population can can bring out that is what manipur that is what bengal rajasthan all of us can bring together our local products in the world market to say we shall beat corona we shall come up again and once again the government or the international organizations cannot come to my home door and tell me to grow it is me you and all of us together that can that can do that can do buji buji na i hope you getting my point all that i am trying to convey is that we have had terrific outstanding history in the past we had a downfall for a while a short duration and the rise in is at the horizon i can see that going i see uh, uh, nagaland itself um, your talimara now the football captain had has had wonderful times so wrestlers from nagaland has uh, have done tremendous uh, Uh, a contribution to not only to your own people but to the country manipur uh, and other areas in northeast are the heart of the country you have tremendous spirit tremendous go dedication is outstanding now this dedication once comes out it is definitely for the good of the nation and those nations whose youth are bright whose youth are thinking whose youth is discussing how to grow is destined to grow the nation is destined to grow so all that i wish to convey on this fabulous day to all of you all my brother indians is that let us vow to contribute to the nation in our little way in our small way and once we start contributing it becomes a huge mass do not wait for others to come and help and start my business my job my glory i must start doing it remember in the mountains when a, you you would have seen the uh, the entire cloud of snow coming down how does this glacier comes down it starts with one particle that one particle which is destabilized picks up another particle those two pick up the third particle fourth particle and the set of particles keep gathering other particles and that one single particle comes down as a huge snow blowing down the hill so you and me have to be those particles who can take the entire mass entire crowd and our, our world to the site of glory and remember the best of the fish they swim against the current they simply swim against the current you remember this girl from uh, guwahati uh, who who called the uh, european uh, european rail at the age of uh, 17 18 
this girl in class 12 won the international universities five gold medals in uh, short races 100 200 400 in italy one girl from a humble family hima das i'm sure you all know her one girl from a very poor family changed not only her own future but brought name fame and glory to her parents her state and india that is the power of unity of india and if you look at the statement given for the unity of india it actually says the unity day will provide an opportunity to reaffirm the inherent strength and resilience of our nation to withstand the actual and potential threat to unity integrity and security of our motherland it speaks so well about all integrated aspects of growth of our nation so on this glorious day i extend my compliments to each one of you especially the organizations organizers who have organized the entire program the college uh, people of nagaland people of uh, my nation my country uh, whom i love with my heart and soul all the very best wish you all the glory wish you all wonderful times and don't forget it's the hard work that brings the glory and we all are hard work loving people we can achieve anything wish you all the very best my sincere compliments thank you uh, colonel joy thank you so much uh, dr anirudh jal george is here my sincere thanks to you sir and uh, all my young generation friends wish you all the very best i am available for any support that i can render have a wonderful time and best wishes of national unity day thank you so much over to the organizer take care thank you brigadier rajpur um we're very privileged to have you and more than happy to have you in our midst today Honor. I'm sure many of us were moved by your profound words. I know I was. Well, moving on, we have um, another important aspect of today's National Unity Day. That is our Unity Pledge. So I request all of you to join us in our Unity Pledge. But please uh, keep your mics muted. But all the while, join us in this pledge. I solemnly pledge that I dedicate myself to preserve the unity, integrity, and security of the nation, and also strive hard to spread this message among my fellow countrymen. I take this pledge in the spirit of unification of my country, which was made possible by the vision and actions of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. I also solemnly resolve to make my own contribution to ensure internal security of my country. We've um, almost reached the end of the show, so before we conclude, we have vote of thanks by Assistant Professor Ms. Yaorefi Awangshi. Uh, Ms. Awangshi, you may take your time. Thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, as the, the nation celebrate and commemorate on the birth and anniversary of Sadar Vallabhai Patel, the Department of Political Science, Tetsu College, Timapur, Nagaland also join and partake in this uh, celebration and observation of uh, Rashtriya Ekta Diwas. And we have recommitted ourselves today uh, to, to vote for the unity of the nation. And uh, we, have, uh, we have also uh, deliberated upon the understanding on a more broader and more extensive understanding of this 
particular uh, unity uh, idea of the nation and unity. So I, on behalf of the Department of Political Science, would like to uh, extend a heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to all the participants uh, of today's program and program and I also would like to extend a special uh, thanks and appreciation uh, to our guest speaker uh, Brigadier Juan Raj uh, and Dr. Hewasa Lorin, Vice Principal Tetsu College uh, to all the other HODs of HODs of uh, different departments of the college, teachers, students, participants, and uh, the presenters who have made this program a very meaningful one. Uh, I would also like to uh, express our gratitude to and appreciation to our HOD, Dr. Uh, Dr. Rime and Dr. Sabur for uh, Sabur and the college management team, ID team, um, etc., for making this program into a fusion. And thank you everyone for thank you everyone for making this program a, a success and also a meaningful one. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, you have a, a great time ahead. Thank you. A very touching note. Thank you, Ms. Awamshi. On behalf of the Department of Political Science, I'd like to thank everyone for joining our webinar. And in particular, our guest speaker, Brigadier Raj Purohit, thank you for taking your time out and joining us today and helping us celebrate National Unity Day. And on an additional note, I'd also like to extend our warmest appreciation for Dr. Sabur, Assistant Professor, and uh, Dr. Rime, Head of Department of Political Science, for tirelessly working to organize and successfully hold today's webinar. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Uh, thank you very much and have a pleasant evening. Thank you very much. Wonderful time. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much sir, for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. I was so like